Hello and welcome to the EPROM 9. So as promised, I'm going to do a video on this and the multiplexer and whatnot. As requested, the frequency counter is set up and as you can see, it's measuring about 730 hertz. That is hertz. We're not quite at a kilohertz. The noise, of course, means the frequency is not entirely unstable. That's the power line. If we knock down the time base a bit, which is that way. Ah, oh, the noise has changed a bit. Then we have that, and this is the frequency, which is also what this is measuring. Coming out from the 5-5 five five timer, which is that thing there, the thing with the green cap and the green wire is the frequency. So we can see the probes to the frequency counter and oscilloscope, and then the other trace is measuring the power down here. Well, there's filter cap filtering out the noise, so that it can automatically count, as can be seen here. Should see it go to 50. There we go, it's 51. If the noise is going, then it just malfunctions. So the noise base is not perfect, and it still needs work, but it's better. So how does this thing work? Because Mr. Tribal Masters actually asked, what is a multiplexer? It is far too complex to com explain by words without doing a full essay. But pretty much it's the process of getting a signal from one part, which you want to get down one line, but there's several signals you want to get down that line to represent the data. So in this point, we want individual numbers on this, so we want the digit 1 here, digit 2 here, and not to end up ghosting in amongst each other that they end up undefinable. Seriously, developing your own multiplexer is no easy task. The amount of optocouplers I've gone through. <laughs> I've blown up a few components on this circuit already. So what is it? Let's bring up my diagram of it to explain. So we have our driver, which is here, these two pins. So we'll switch them on and off periodically. And of course, we have, we're have we going to have a total of four of these lines which need to be put into here. So there's going to be another set of this sitting on top which linked to this. And basically, we want one set of segment, segment display, two. But if we just pump them in at the same time, they'll just appear as just overlapping each other and completely indistinguishable. So, in amongst that, we power each one individually, so each one will get time on the digit. But to make sure it doesn't end up in the same place, we activate the representative grills for the VFD. So when we have this one active, then the grill here will also be active. Then when we want that one active, we turn off that grill and turn on that grill, the second grill. And this is known as multiplexing, so each turn gets one chance at displaying it on, the, on it, the digit at its respective place. But we want to do it so fast, it looks simultaneous. And that effect can be seen here with a slight bit of flicker. But the camera doesn't pick up, pick up the flicker as bad as the human eye. You may also notice filaments are glowing. To fully understand this circuit, you need to know a bit about VFDs, and I'd really recommend Google for that, because this is not what this video is focused on. So each chip, seven segs in, being multiplexed. They call it a demultiplexer, which was the wrong word. It's actually a multiplexer. So yeah, these are all optocouplers. They turned out to be what worked best. And of course, using 1970s transistors, PMP transistors, to do it. And I'm triggering off the negative line and that LED should be plugged in over here, but it's not now. There we go. Good as new. And now we have an error of some kind. There we go. Let's get that sorted. Stupid thing. Hang on, uh, bear with me. 
I want to also have them glowing and they're being a bit awkward. The wires are being absolute arses. As you can see, they don't stay in the sodding holes. God damn it. Get in there and stay in there. Oh fuck, this reminds me of my first set session at sex. Come on, get in there. Oh fuck you, you bloody thing. Oh dear, this is not good. Okay, I'll give up with that for now. And now we've got an example of ghosting because the thing was fucking around. Oh yay, what's gone wrong? I don't know what the heck. Yeah, but that's basically a multiplexer. There's going to be two of these circuits. No more, no less. It seems to have sorted itself out now. <laughs> so sensitive to any sort of influence. Oh, we're up to 800 and something kilohertz, 798. Yeah, the frequency is entirely stable. My focusing on this thing pisses me off at times. Come on. There we go. I need more probes. <laughs> but for now, thanks for watching. I hope that sheds some light to what a multiplexer is and the whole thing has died. <laughs> well, it did for a moment. Thanks for watching. Oh, yes, I'd also like to know I'm prototyping if one, this camera will focus, and two. EEPROM 9 here with an update to the VFD clock. As you may notice, the circuit has changed. Yes, we are using the 4017 BEs, and a 4011 BE is an inverter chip, and we have success. Now, we just need to see if we can get away with removing these transistors and using the chip as an inverter on its own. We also have a slight problem with one of the segments dying because of a loose connection and I know where it is now, I worked it out thanks to the old pressure on circuit board tactic. Crappy soldering on my part. What else would you expect it to be? But anyway, anyone want to see the old circuit? What a rat's nest it is. I'm pleased this circuit has served its due and the components can go back in the parts bin. It pleases me that it is a success. So far. So, the project can continue unharmed. Ah, yes, and so we have done away with that. Ah, oh, the refresh rate is not correct. There we go, now the refresh rate is correct. Hee hee! We've done away with the transistors! Now let's go get a good look at how this is wired because I'm bad with my documentation. Then the refresh rate is wrong, wrong. They actually look pretty constant. It looks kind of cool on the camera though, because it misses on the multiplexing. Those LEDs just test the other points because I've only got two segments to live on from space. Rat's nest. <coughs> and there's a big old power storage cap to reduce noise, which is what you can see in this trace. Power line noise. And there's the signal. And there's its frequency. And its blurriness goodness. See, all this test equipment is very useful for knowing when stuff goes wrong. Let's give you one last look at it running. Beautiful. I should really put this up on my website. New update, multiplex. So this would be driver version 2. Driver version 3 because we removed the transistors. Success. I don't have a lot of time to film this, I've done one take already but didn't like it. We've now upped the voltage to 14, as an improvement.
that is working a treat perfectly and it's just switched to faulty that is complete the driver all tested and working absolutely perfect there's that these I don't think I'm going to use these original HCF I believe they're 4026 BE 7 seg drivers that's what they are I'm not so sure I'm going to continue to use those, so now we're going to show you the circuits. There's my reverse engineering of the VFD, of course I need to redo the ink. There's the original clock actual driver circuit. I am thinking of just scrapping that and using something different because it's going to be a lot to do on the thing that's another thing that's an, that's my VFD graphic equaliser here's the actual multiplexer optocoupler part and of course an absolute treat I have replaced most of these ones but yeah uh, there's your M1 and M2 multiplexer in and 2 and there'll be an, another replica same as this to be built I haven't actually built it yet. That worked a treat. Ah, still time. Then of course we go past that's nothing to do with that project, neither is that, neither is that. That is, that's dead obsolete now. It worked. And this is actual driver circuit. Thanks for watching.